Hey guys, today we have the 2018 Honda Ridgeline. This is an all-wheel drive RTLE model, so let's check it out. Before I get started, I want to thank Honda Cars of Rockwall in Rockwall, Texas for letting me make this video possible. They were very generous to let me show you the Ridgeline. I'll put all of the information down below in the description box. If you're in the DFW area, please be sure to check them out and they will take care of you. All right guys, thank you so much for tuning in for the Honda Ridgeline video. It is raining right now, so I am sorry if some water gets on the screen. I'm gonna to try to make this quick on the outside. As we move around front, you can see the LED lights, the daytime running lights right above the headlights. The headlights are also LED, and you do get automatic high beams with those. You know, I kind of have mixed feelings about this design. I do like it, but just the fact that it looks so much like the Pilot, which it is based off of, you know, kind of throws me through a loop. I wish it looked a little bit more unique than the Pilot, but I do still like it. One thing that I would like is the fog lights to be LED as well. That's okay. We do get 18 inch wheels standard on here. Sorry if you keep seeing my hand in the corner. I'm trying to cover up the lens, not let any water get on it. This is the white diamond color. I think it's pretty sharp. Let me know what you think of this color down below. I just got out of a Toyota Tacoma right before I did this video. And uh, you know, they both market to different buyers, but Honestly, I think I'd have to go with the Ridgeline just because of the practicality of it in terms of being a daily driver. This doesn't tow as much. This can tow 5,000 pounds compared to the Tacoma 6,400 pounds. The two-way tailgate is definitely nice. And the trunk bed right down there. So you can't actually see the speakers, but the speakers are integrated and built into this bed in fact i can't remember exactly how they work but it's basically that panel right there that you see each panel on each side we do get the standard 3.5 liter v6 aside from uh being based after the Honda Pilot, the difference here with this and the, the GM trucks, the Nissan Frontier, the Toyota Tacoma is, is that it's a unibody. So it's not a body on frame construction, so you can get a more comfortable car-like ride, just like the Honda Pilot, which is right behind it. Once we get into the cab of this truck, you'll find that it's definitely comfortable. In terms of the seats, you do have lumbar support right here, forward and backwards. It doesn't move up and down, but I can still find a pretty comfortable spot when I do that. Right here, we do have decline and incline. We also have, we can tilt the back part and the front part up and down. You can slide forward and backwards as well plenty of ways to get comfortable in here where it's at right now I have quite a bit of headroom um, I was just in a Toyota Tacoma before this and I definitely felt a little more scrunched in there and the seats were not nearly as adjustable as this the steering wheel just a simple lever here move it in and out telescopic up and down it does have a pretty good range right there before we have this armrest right here which I really like On the inside, we do have the smart key, therefore we have push button start. Just put your foot on the brake, hit that button, let it fire up. Starting out with this steering wheel from Honda, this is leather wrapped. It is comfortable to hold, it does feel pretty, pretty supple. As you can see, you have a spot to hold here in the corners, you do have a slot down below, which this is honestly one of my favorite things with steering wheels. I love being able to just have my hand down here either way. 
Anyways, on the left side, you do have controls for your audio. You can switch through pages with this. As you can see on the screen there. Right down here, you have your calling, your, your answer, your hang up, and your, your voice commands. And right there on this model, we push that button, we get a heated steering wheel. How nice would that be in the cold weather? Moving over to the right side, you do have your, your radar cruise, your uh, cruise control set up and down. Right here we have the, the lane keeping assist from Honda. You can control that through here. If we move down below, we start moving through with these buttons. That will adjust on the display ahead. Just like that. And if you want to reset any of this, very easy. Just a nice reset button right here. Moving over to the left side, you got your standard bend to open and close. This, control, this controls your side mirrors. Move it to the left, move it to the right, move it to the middle to lock it, and you can adjust. The Econ button is for extra fuel economy. It just kind of dulls your throttle response and makes the engine a little bit lifeless just to help aid in fuel economy. We go down even further. You have parking sonar right there. Down below, you can turn that off or on. Road departure mitigation, I'll turn it again, right there. Light means that it's on. We have the, the braking right here, the pre-collision right here. Traction control here, your cargo light for the bed. And then there's a plug-in in the bed of the truck. Over to the doors. Definitely nice to have memory seats. You can get your seat set, hit number one. Get your partner's seat set, hit number two. Then you won't ever have to dink around changing up your seats ever again. Got your standard doorknob right there. You do get automatic driver and passenger windows, your window locking and your, your door lock and unlock. Move down a little lower. You got your fuel door opener. You got your hood opener. Standard pedal setup. In the door, we do get quite a bit of storage. You have a little pocket right there. You have a longer pocket right here that actually goes fairly deep in there. You could hide something back there. Right down here, another deep pocket. It's not ideal to put a, a bottle or a drink in there, but definitely store some things in there. Overall, the layout is definitely nice. You have nice materials across the whole dash. Things look like they're in a good place. I like how the screen is a little bit higher, closer to the road. Easy to use controls down below. One plus for the door, this is very soft, very nice. You can see the stitching going across right here, nice soft touch material where your arms are gonna be. You can even see the detail with this trim piece going across, that looks pretty nice. Right up here, you can adjust the brightness of the display. One thing about Honda is everything, uh, everything is pretty easy to use and to navigate We'll start down here. You do have dual zone automatic climate control up front. I can adjust both sides if they're synced. If we unsync, I can adjust mine. They can adjust theirs. You can sync it back up and it'll automatically go to the driver's side. You do have your controls with your fan setting, your AC, your recirculation, etc. We do have high and low heated seats. Go right into the middle to turn it off. They do warm up fairly quickly. There is a good little storage bin right here. You could put a phone, a wallet, whatever, change, whatever you need to. Same thing for the heated seats over here. There is a storage space down here. You do get a USB plug-in right over there. You got your standard 12 volt right here. Nice flat spot to put whatever you need to. Cup holders are large and accommodating. They're in a good spot. They're away from your arms, away from the shifter. Now, one cool thing about all-wheel drives is you get traction management here. So when I push this button, it's gonna show up on the screen. When I push that again, as you can see, you go normal, snow, mud, sand, and you can leave it on whatever you're at. So I think that's pretty neat, especially for a vehicle that, you know, is not typically known to be an off-road vehicle but it gives you some options depending on where you are 
right here in the middle, we have a huge opening right here. Take a look down there. It's very deep, it's very wide. You can put stuff in there, close this back up, and set stuff on here. Also down below, you do have another 12 volt power outlet, an auxiliary plug-in, and another USB plug. On top of that, you have this sliding, this sliding thing right here, you can move back and forth, so you have two-tiered storage system. Now you might be wondering, there's no armrest, but the armrest, the armrest is actually a ratcheting armrest just like this. Standard, you can have it up like that, or you can pull it down and lock it wherever you want to, and it won't go anywhere until you push it all the way back and reset it. I honestly like these. You don't have to share it with the person next to you. It is soft. You can adjust it. You can move it out of the way, and then you don't ever have to bump somebody's arm out of the way to get into this center console. You do get a locking glove box. It's the same story as far as the door on the passenger side. We do get an automatic dimming mirror. Always nice to have. So first, you notice right there we get a conversation mirror. So when you're sitting in the driver's seat, you can see your kids in the back seat, see people in the back seat, even in the front seat. You can just glance at that so you don't have to turn around and look. Now, if we go, if we go all the way down, you got your standard sunglasses holder. We've got moonroof right here. It is a one touch. The controls are right up there. You got your lighting on both sides and they are nice and bright. You do have Honda's home link up here as well. For your garage openers, one, two, and three. You do get lights with your vanity mirror. And these mirror or these visors do and these visors do move in and out. Let's check out the infotainment screen. This is an 8-inch touchscreen. It is 100% touch. You can use your steering wheel controls, obviously, but there's no volume knob, there's no tuning knob. That's one big hit that this thing got from some other reviewers. It does have a little slider bar, which is kind of challenging to use, but let's forget all that stuff and, di and dive in. One of my favorite things is it has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. I have my phone plugged in. We go to CarPlay. You can see your apps, you know, select apps anyways. You even got your little center button to go back to the home screen basically. You can use Apple Maps, you can listen to your music. Um, if you wanna back out, you can just go to Honda and go back to the normal system. Otherwise, you can talk to Siri just like normal. We'll back out of here. Go back, you can see we have the navigation, the satellite link navigation. You can go to your phone settings, information, audio, decide what kind of audio source you want. So like I said earlier, this has the truck bed audio. You can go to that, and then you'll have to set it up, but you can play out of built-in speakers in the bed of the truck. And I think that, that is really cool. You can dink around with other settings and customize things. Go up here if we want to see the map real easy to get to same with your audio go back to the home screen you can um, and even though it doesn't have any knobs it is still fairly easy to use these buttons respond fairly well you can slide no problem and we have three blank screens right now one really awesome thing about this vehicle and this system is it has a 540 watt audio system with eight speakers so and a subwoofer Plus, you got the in-bed stereo system, so pretty sweet. As we move to the back seat, one thing you'll notice is these doors just don't open very much. Um, it's not a deal breaker for me, but some people, they might need the extra space to get in or you have some big objects you want to put back here. That's as far back as it will go. Getting in here, it's not bad. One thing you might notice is that these are stadium seats. So these actually sit higher than the front seats, so you can actually see over this headrest right here, which is kind of cool. I have this front seat set to where I would normally sit, and as you can see, in front of my knees, 
plenty of space right there. I have room underneath the seats. It's about a, a neutral position in terms of how far back you can recline here. Um, these seats are soft. You do still have the leather seats back here. We do have an armrest in the middle that does actually stay up instead of going all the way to the seat. So that is nice. In terms of headroom, I have enough at 5'9". You know, I would wonder someone six foot, maybe a little bit taller back here. But uh, I do have a, a few inches above my head right here. You do have some handles just in case. And on top of that, we get a little storage nook and a cup holder in the door, plus the same soft materials on the doors that you get in the front. Not to mention that we can pull a handle and lift those babies up just like that. And you have a, a semi-flat load floor. You do have that plastic piece on the bottom where those seats come down and attach. But still, I can handle that. Pull it to put it back down, snap it into place. In the back seat, as I mentioned, the stadium seating. So straight in front of my face is right there, but really what I see is more like this. So this is pretty cool and I do still have some decent headroom. I really do like the layout of this dash. It's very simple, but yet still fairly sleek and modern. So back here, these rear passengers do get some vents, which is always nice to have. Do have a tiny little storage area right there. And down here, we actually have two fast charging USB ports, which can definitely come in handy when you have people in the back or you're on a trip. You can always plug that in. Nice thing about the seats is you do get the 60-40 folding. You can have one up, have one down. Taking a look at the center armrest, we have two small cup holders, maybe for a can, that's about it. Small storage, but it is, it is soft and comfortable. As we take a look at the window sticker, as you can see, it is the all-wheel drive RTLE. This does come standard with the 3.5 liter V6, 280 horsepower, and 262 pound-feet of torque. It has a six-speed automatic transmission. Miles per gallon. In the city for the all-wheel drive is 18 and 25 on the highway. You will get one mile per gallon better with the front-wheel drive models. This vehicle was assembled in Alabama. Total vehicle price, 42595 The back of this pickup is where I really get jealous that I didn't have this in my old pickup. Uh, a couple things, this tailgate does go down just like a traditional pickup. Just like that. It doesn't soft close, but there's a reason it doesn't soft close. Because it can also open up from the side. There's a little release stamping right here. Find that handle. Opens up like that. Now why would you want a tailgate to open up like that? Uh, a couple reasons. You can get closer to the bed. You can have better body mechanics to reach in and grab some stuff if you need to. Another one is we have a built-in trunk right here. This does have a drain plug. If you want to put, you know, just like they do in the commercials, if you want to put some ice and some beer, some drinks, whatever you want back there, you can do that. It is lockable so you can store some things without having to worry. Overall, I do like the Ridgeline a lot. There's a lot to like about it. I'm really sorry about the rain, the weather today. I couldn't film outside for very long and uh, I hope the screen didn't get wet. So thanks for sticking in. A um, couple things that I am not a fan of are I like the leather seats, but they're perforated leather, which means if something gets in there, if you have kids or you just spill something, you know, chances of getting it out are not very good. I wish the styling was a little bit different. I do like it for the most part if it didn't look like the Honda Pilot. I do like the Honda Pilot, but I think that they should be a little bit more distinguished than what they are. The fuel economy for this vehicle is definitely a plus. It's better than the Tacoma. It's better than some versions of the GM Twins but not the diesel, which you have to pay quite a bit more to get anyways. It's definitely comfortable. I really wish I could drive one. When I can, I'll be sure to let you know. Please take a look at that Tacoma video that I did right before I did this one. Uh, if you're new to my channel, check out some other videos. I'll be posting videos every week. Please take some time, check it out. Subscribe if you will. Give it a thumbs up if it was helpful. And thank you for watching. Have a great day.